Hola, aloha. ¿Cómo estás? I don't even know what that means, but I think it's how are you. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Moments with Miley. So we are, I think, <laughs> wrapping up the series that we've been doing on grace. Um, the grace of God. I think for me, the message of the grace of God is the thing that has changed and impacted my life the most in life. It is the thing that has given me freedom to approach God, to know that first of all, I can approach him by myself as myself on my own i don't have to approach him with fear i don't have to like wipe myself down 10 times and say you know a thousand prayers before i come into the presence of god you know to make myself clean and worthy to be before god it's that i'm not worthy but because i'm in jesus he has called me worthy he made jesus worthy and for as long as we are in jesus there's a scripture that says you're hidden in Christ, in God. So it's that for as long as you're in Christ, you're hidden in Christ. And so when Christ, when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. And I think that that's one of the most freeing truths. In fact, the most freeing truth that you'll ever encounter in this life, that God's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. There's a song I like. It's a reggae song by Israel Houghton. No, you're not mad at me. No, you're not mad at me. You're madly in love with me. You love me madly, madly, madly. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. But the point is, he's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. Isn't that a freaking truth? So today... As we, I think, wrap up the series on grace, <laughs> I just wanted to talk about it from the perspective of marriage. Um, applying grace in your marriage. I think that, I believe grace is one of the most important things that you can carry with you into your marriage. You must receive it, receive the grace of God, know that you are loved completely, wholly, regardless of what you do or don't do. And then you must give it and extend it to your spouse. I think that when I teach about marriage, genuinely when anyone teaches about marriage, many times a lot of the things that they speak about can apply to other relationships that are not marriage relationships, unless it's very marriage specific, like sexual intimacy or something. Don't apply that to other relationships, please. A big <laughs> but generally some of those things if you think about it and you apply it in another relationship you realize that your relationships are thriving it's just we speak about marriage in particular because it's one of your most important earthly relationships it's the only way you stand before god and before many people and you know witnesses and you declare some things and speak some things and you are literally bound to this person by life because of the words that you have spoken so it's important bound sounds like bondage but like you you're tied to your person for life so marriage is a very important key core relationship um yeah so grace in the context of marriage um grace like we've talked about in these past few weeks is knowing that you are loved regardless and so as a spouse in your marriage it's important that you give grace but also receive it so you give grace by communicating to your partner through your words and your actions that they are loved regardless and you receive grace in your marriage by behaving as though you believe that you are loved regardless so what does that mean? That in a marriage, your love cannot and should not be conditional. It's not that you're nice to your spouse when they do this thing that you like so much or they behave a certain way and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, and then they get a certain treatment. And then if they behave in a different way, then maybe there's a distance between you or things are not quite as lovey-dovey between you because then that's not grace you've not really received the grace or you're not extending grace to your partner so that's the one side of it is that you recognize and understand that you are loved but you also treat your partner as though they are loved regardless of what they do or don't do 
So that means if your partner comes home late at night and you don't like it, you receive them with a smile, you love them, you talk to them as though they had come home at 4 p.m., which is the time that you would prefer. <laughs> you know, whether you like it in your heart or not, you just, you be that person. Because you see, God loves us in spite of our sin. God detests sin. He hates sin so much. And yet we sin from time to time. So what God did, long time ago, ahead of time, is he said, okay, let me forgive all their sins so that that can no longer be a separator between us. So that when I see them, I only see Jesus Christ. I only see the good in them and the good things that they have to offer. So that's what you have. So when you have a partner in your marriage, is that you look at them, you receive them as though, like, it's like, you're the best thing in this life, man. You know, you treat them and receive them like as if there's nothing at all. There's no flaw in them. Um, there's a story I like of a certain man of God, Brother Kenneth Copeland and his wife, Gloria Copeland. Um, that's his third wife. I think he was married twice before. Very short marriages, very brief, I think, in his before Jesus era. And when he got married to Gloria, his testimony to this day, they've been married, I think, 50 something years or 60 something years because he's like 80 there you know well advanced in age and his testimony that he gives of his wife is that so many times the thing that his wife would say to him is kenneth i find no fault in you imagine that in a moment where maybe he's come home he had a bitter sour deal or he's been stressed by so many things going on during his work day or People have been bashing him and saying all sorts of things and he's just feeling downcast and feeling like a failure and feeling like something is wrong and he gets home and hears his wife celebrating him and saying, I find no fault in you. I would imagine on a day where maybe he didn't bring her home flowers. Let's assume he's in the habit of bringing her home flowers every day and this one day he doesn't bring them. And she's feeling disappointed and sad because it's like, I'm excited about this thing. I'm always anticipating it, looking forward to it. And then he didn't bring it. And she's like, Kenneth, I find no fault in you. Do you know what that did? It empowered him more and more with each time that sentence was made to be the best version of a husband that he could be. Because he had to live up to the words that she was speaking. It's like a thing of, you remind yourself, like you almost catch yourself about to do a bad thing. Then you're like, she finds no fault in me. You're like, no fault in me. Okay, that means I can't raise my voice. Because like, yeah, she finds no fault in me. Do you understand? It's that when you receive grace a certain way, you respond a certain way. So you be the person in your marriage that will cause your spouse to uh, like be the perfect picture of Jesus. It's like they behave a certain way and people are like, eh, who are you married to? But it's just because... They've received a certain grace, which you have extended to them. And so they've been able to live in the freedom of knowing that even on the days when you mess up, even though it might be unintentional, even though it might be intentional, you're still loved. You're still welcomed with open arms. You're still received because, yeah, like grace, receive and embrace the grace of God. One of the things that I learned, that we learned when we were doing um, marriage prep, right, is that the way you deal with your spouse, you should be careful about the way you deal with your spouse. You'll find that in a marriage, usually, there's one person that's more vocal about the issues. You know, every time something happens, you speak about it right away. You talk about it. You're so quick to say this, to correct, to, you know, raise an issue, blah, blah, that kind of thing. And then there's maybe the other person who is less confrontational. So you find that they'll wait for a thing to build up before they speak about it. Or they'll just keep quiet and keep it to themselves or that kind of thing. Now what that does, without us realizing it, what, that, what ends up happening is that you find in some way, it's like the person who is more vocal, you may be tempted to think that you're the better person in the relationship because you're not receiving as many complaints or as many issues. And then you, the person who is constantly hearing something every day about what you did wrong, what you didn't do right, what, you know, happened, what this, that, the other, might also be tempted to think that maybe you're the one who is not pulling your end of the weight in the marriage. But I would like to submit and say that I don't think that that's true. It's just that because one person is more vocal about their things, 
they speak about them more therefore the other person is hearing more about their wrongs and the things that are not going well and all of that meanwhile this other person hears their things maybe once a week as opposed to someone else who hears four times a day <laughs> so what does that mean it doesn't mean don't air your issues or don't voice your issues i think that both sides maybe could be a bit extreme so you find a place of balance in the middle as i say this i'm talking to myself because so yeah <laughs> but you find a place of balance in the middle it's that as a person who is quiet not maybe quiet but non-confrontational because i think i'm the one in the marriage who is non-confrontational but i'm not quiet at all but so as a person who is non-confrontational you don't pile things up and be quiet about them to the point that you're now breaking where it has become like when you reach breaking point and you talk about it and you express it because chances are you will not also express yourself well in that moment but also you'll be dealing with things in your heart for a long time until you finally get to speak the thing but then also on this end is that you don't have to talk about every single thing every single time it bothers you like first breathe relax ask yourself do i need to talk about this do i need to bring it up how best can i bring it up how do i communicate it that it will come out lovingly with my point still being made so you find some sort of middle ground where it's that you don't snap at every single thing but you also don't bury everything there's like a good balance of give it some time maybe speak about this and this is how i'll speak about it so it's that you extend grace to your partner by recognizing first of all that they are flawed they will have mistakes they will make mistakes they will do things that will get on your nerves but the way you speak about them and communicate them matters that your spouse needs to be able to know that okay there's this thing i did yesterday that my person didn't like but because of the way you've communicated it they don't feel like they can't approach you and you've excommunicated them and there's a drift and a river between and like you know things have fallen apart it's that you communicate something in such a way that the person is able to come to you know express themselves as well and say i'm sorry this is what happened or this is why i did this if they feel they need to explain themselves and there's room and there's space and there's freedom but they are also able to see and understand where you're coming from that they can do better the next time but that the moment this conversation is had it doesn't feel like there is a big gulf between us eh? and now it's going to take two days for us to recover it's that they come you can even laugh about it you'll be like man you know i don't like it when you when you what shower and leave the floor wet and all of that like it's so oh my gosh what then you laugh about it. you're like hey really ha huh? okay yeah i'll do better whatever and if they don't do better you smile and be happy and life continues you don't allow things to disrupt the quality of your marriage the other thing about grace is still in line with allowing your person to make mistakes but also recognizing that you're different you don't have to point out every single thing that they do that you don't like it's just almost like the thing that i've just said but i have examples clearer examples you'll find in a relationship so aha uh -huh. when i got married um there are two things between my husband and i that we were doing that were irritating each other very different but very like as in me was the problem and so like as in me was the problem but we were being bothered by each other in a little bit of a way in some way so i the thing that my husband used to do that i just i'm like as in is he if he's open maybe let's say chocolate or maybe like a bottle of juice like we bought juice from somewhere out there or maybe it's takeaway or something when he's done with whatever he's doing he'll get his rubbish very nicely remove it from the sitting room take it to the kitchen and put it in the sink i'm like the sink is where they wash clothes this is so messy why would you do that like get your stuff out the sink man stop doing it on the other hand still about the sink the thing that i used to do that used to sort of like get on my husband's nerves or that like he's just like he didn't like it was i would finish eating remove my plate from the kitchen i mean from the sitting room or the dining room whatever where we've eaten i'll even pick his if he's finished eating or whatever then i'll come i'll take them to the kitchen and i'll put them on the side of the sink not inside the sink and he's like you're inches away from the sink put it inside the sink like what is the issue now in your marriage that can become a mountain 
if you approach it the wrong way and not from the lens of grace. It can real, real become a mountain. Like for so many people that get divorced or separated, you'll find that after a while, they can't point you to the specific issue. If you actually really have conversations with them, like it's just that, I don't know, we grew apart. He used to over irritate me. Over what, what, what. And you find that it's just letting things pile and pile and pile and pile and pile to the point that you almost can't see your partner a certain way in a good light anymore. You just see them as this annoying person that doesn't listen to you, that doesn't care about you, that just what. But the thing is, I do what I do because I've been, I didn't get married at age five where I'm still being trained to do things. And so I'm very easy, easily malleable. And you can tell me and teach me a thing and I get it right away. And that becomes my way of life. I got married in my twenties, in my late twenties at that I had habits that I had built, that I had formed, things I do a certain way. I've been putting my things by the sink for all my life, like outside the sink, not inside the sink. So it's like, it's it's a non-issue for me. Like I'm like, as in, it's in the area in the general vicinity, what do you want? Like, what's the big deal? Do you understand? And he's also been doing that for his entire life, not like entire life, but for a long time. So for me to just wake up and be like, you need to stop doing that, man. Just stop it. Like, as in, it's not, it's not going to change in a second because I said, let it change. Does that make sense? Like as much as he desires to in his heart, he will make the effort. It will probably take some time. Maybe it will be instant. But it's that as a person, as his wife, I need to extend the grace to know that I am loved. Do you understand? So I understand that when he puts his trash in the sink, he loves me. He's not doing it to annoy me or to get on my nerves. He's doing it because he's different from me. And for him to also know and understand that when I come with my plate and I put it next to the sink and it doesn't reach inside the sink, I'm not doing it to annoy him or to irritate him, even though he said it maybe to me two times before. I'm doing it because it's a habit. I have come with my habits from my home. He has come with his habits from his home and sometimes they don't meet. And so to understand that you're loved, you don't see everything your partner does as an attack on you, but then also to extend love to your partner that you don't attack them for every single thing they do that's different from what you do. Because you are different, you come from different backgrounds, you have different understandings, different upbringings, and you're coming together to try and make a mixing and a oneness of the differences that you bring. So you have to extend grace to your person constantly. That you love them regardless of what they do, whether the thing they do, they do, you understand it or you don't understand it, whether it drives you up a wall or it doesn't drive you up a wall, it's that you extend grace to them and know and understand that you're two different people. They won't always meet your specific standards and that it's not intentional. The thing that freed me the most, that has freed me in this marriage, is knowing that my, he's not out to get me. Do you understand? Like, I know that I'm loved and he's not out there intentionally plotting how he can disorganize my life. So when he does a thing, I'm able to communicate to him. If he does a thing that I don't like, I'm able to ably communicate to him and say, hey, this thing you did, I didn't like it without feeling like it's going to reduce the love or whatever, but I can also communicate it well because I'm not coming from a place of how could you do that? Don't you know it annoys me? No, no, no. I'm coming from a place of you do this this way. I do this this way. We need a bit of reconciliation because I'm not understanding or it's making me feel some way. So be the person in your marriage that extends grace. Ask your person, you know, the way you communicate a thing that is not going well for you, that you don't like, it matters. Communicate with grace. Don't communicate as though you are the one in the marriage who is doing all the things right and for them they're always wrong. I don't understand what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Communicate with love. But also see them in the eyes of God. Give thanks for them. Focus more on the things that they're doing well, on the things that are going right, on all the good things. Like, make it work. Like, appro have, an, give, have an eye of thanksgiving and always be grateful for the person God has given you and give thanks for the different things that they are doing for, there's always something good and something to be thankful for. So always look out for that, watch that, pay attention to that, give thanks because 
there's always a lot to be thankful for and the things that are not working well how you approach it matters but also know that you are loved in your relationship and then extend that same love to someone else i feel like why today's episode was sort of all over the place but at the same time it was centered and clear like that the, the things i'm saying are clear but i hope that you've caught something from it but the point of my message is grace extend grace receive grace know and operate from a place of knowing that you are loved and treasured like when your person does something don't take it as a personal attack on yourself understand that you're different and communicate from that place of we are different but how do we reconcile on this matter and then give love extend grace don't be the person that's always quick to point out the flaws quick your your words they matter mind what you speak don't always be one of the things that we learned about conflict resolution is that when you're resolving a conflict with your person how you communicate matters so for example if they came and they left their socks in the sink <laughs> i don't know what it is about me and the sink is not something he does or i do it's just a funny example because it's unlikely so no one's going to feel attacked they come home and the socks end up in the sink and every day they end up in the sink and it really bothers you how you communicate matters when you're expressing your discomfort to your person rather than saying you always you say i feel so communicate and make it about yourself so that the person doesn't end up getting defensive you explain what it does to you. So instead of saying, you always leave your socks in the sink. And then it's even annoying. You do it every single day. You think that I like picking them up and picking up after you and blah, 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 blah. Because the moment you start with you always, and then it's an attack, an attacking statement follows. They put up defenses. So it becomes hard for you to communicate well to each other. The communication will not be effective. So rather than saying that, you say, so... I feel very disturbed when you leave your socks in the sink because it's quite unhygienic. I don't like it. Like I'd be thinking about dirty socks every time I'm eating because I know that the plates have touched them. And I just, I feel like I don't enjoy picking up after you in that particular thing. Like having to pick your socks up from the sink. Like I, I just find that it's, I don't know, it does something not nice to me. I don't really enjoy it. Do you think that you could maybe perhaps consider not leaving your socks inside the sink? And so you see, you've communicated. It has been clear, but it hasn't felt attacking. That when someone says that to me, I hear them out. I hear where they're coming from. I hear what they're trying to communicate. And I can ably communicate back and say something without getting defensive in that, yeah, defensive way. Like I can defend myself or, come, or, you know, say something back and say, I'm sorry. I think I do that because I come back tired and I'm not listening and paying attention too much. But let me try and pay attention. And you find that the habit will start to change because you're not pick pointing at the issue. You've extended grace and opened your arms to the person. And so as a result of their love towards you, you find that something is starting to change because they see the need for that change. But also, if it doesn't happen immediately and instantly, you smile, you be happy, you continue with your life, you continue loving them. Life continues because even you, you probably have things that they hope you change, which you're taking a while to change because it's habit. You're used to it. So extend grace in your marriage. Be the person that gives thanks more often for your spouse than you complain. Be the person that communicates and airs your frustrations well. How you confront the matter matters. <laughs> and let just basically be a space of freedom for your spouse. L don't let them have to tiptoe around you or to feel like, you know, something, something. I don't know what. Be a space of freedom, a safe space for your spouse. Hey, is that a tongue twister or what? Safe space for your spouse. Not really, but I like how it sounds. Safe space for your spouse. I like it. Yeah. So be that safe space for your spouse. Extend grace. <laughs> I'm dropping bars, yeah. I'm about to release my next album, love album. Be a safe space for your spouse. Extend grace, yeah. <laughs> 
Anyway, thank you for listening to this episode. Have yourself a lovely day, morning, afternoon, whatever it is. Catch you on the next episode. Same place, same time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.